So the example I'm talking about is uh, example 4-3 um, from the Roberts textbook. And um, one of the things that we're doing first uh, that's a little unusual here is we're thinking uh, uh, this example involves a variable volume dash. So here's, here's the thing. Um, when you have compressible fluids, uh, you, you have a sort of a different scenario that could happen uh, whether you're in a flow system or not a flow system. When we were dealing with the generalized balance earlier, we liked batch because with no flows, it was a relatively simpler system to use. Okay, so that's maybe why we're here, except a, a batch uh, reactor is, is normally just a constant volume vessel. Imagine like a steel container um, or something like that. So it's not usually changing volume, but maybe one scenario that you can think of what uh, you can sort of imagine as a variable volume batch that you might encounter every day is like a piston. Uh, when a reaction is happening there, if you, if you imagine that the um, shape of your container is um, expanding, as, as it would in a case where you have uh, more moles formed on the right-hand side of the equation, then, then that's a scenario that we can use as a reference point. Now, the other thing that the Roberts example is trying to do here is, is to in, introduce a lot of species and just kind of show you how this might all work. Um, but honestly, it, it might be easier in the first case of thinking about a compressible fluid to just imagine A going to B. Uh, except if A goes to B alone, we have balanced stoichiometry so you don't have any changes in moles and that negates this whole exercise. So, uh, something that you might want to consider, um, and maybe we'll have an example of this later, is A goes to 2B or 2A goes to B. Um, that's just simpler in terms of species, um, and you can learn a lot from that kind of example too. But for now, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and work through this example. So it's a gas phase decomposition reaction where A goes to B and C and forms 2D. Um, and so this reaction is taking place in a variable volume batch reactor, and it happens at constant total pressure. Um, so, so that's what we're doing. We're sort of saying, okay, as, as the, if the pressure were to increase, instead of letting that happen, we're just letting the container expand. Uh, we're keeping things at constant temperature, and you have this initial composition where you have some moles of A, uh, some moles of, of D, no moles of B or C. And um, we're including an inert gas just to show how you would treat that. Okay, uh, so I'll just pause for a moment to make sure that you've um, jotted that down. That's not quite all of our um, prompt yet, but I'm about to switch page. Okay, so we're also given a rate expression, and it has this. Um, form that we'll see, uh, we'll dive again um, more into soon in chapter five, um, minus KCA over one plus capital K A um, and uh, the concentration of A. And then what we wanna know is how much time does it take to achieve a certain fractional conversion of A. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and start. Um, And let's start with a design equation. So I'll just kind of write here, choose design equation. Well, this is batch. We don't have a different design equation for if it's a gas or not, because the material balance is still the same. Um, so we're gonna go with batch DE, um, and the, we'll use equation, 3-6, we want it to have conversion because that's what's asked for in the prompt. Um, and so we'll, we'll start with this. N, N A naught over V uh, times uh, the derivative of conversion of A with respect to time equals minus R A. Now note, our volume is changing as a function of time. Um, so I guess I'll go ahead and, and write that here. Our volume is really a function of time, but 
the way it's related to time is that it's it's a function of conversion of a and so we can write it like that okay um, let's go ahead and try to keep going about as if there was nothing special to do uh, in the get in the gas case and try to do the substitution of the rate expression here. So I'm going to change the page now and say um, substitute in rate expression. Okay, and so if I do that, I get uh, NA naught, sorry, I switched to lowercase a there, uh, times the derivative of conversion of A with respect to time. And we have KCA, and we have one plus capital KA times CA on the right hand side. Okay, now we have a few terms here that um, may give us pause. We know what NA naught is, that's fine. Our volume is changing as a function of time and conversion. Uh, our conversion is here. And we want to solve for how, um, uh, let's see, what are we trying to solve for? How much time it takes to achieve a certain fractional conversion. So we're not actually interested in solving for the volume explicitly, um, but we need to consider that it has this dependence. And then on the right-hand side, we have terms that um, include concentration. Uh, and so we want to, to swap those out. But we're dealing with the gas. So this is um, where um, we can use ideal gas law to substitute for concentration. So concentration of A, what is that? Well, based on what we wrote earlier, it's um, equal to pressure, the total pressure over R times the temperature times uh, the mole fraction of A. Okay. We don't know what the mole fraction of A is, but we might be able to figure that out with a stoichiometric table. So let's go ahead and work towards that. With this many species, we knew we were gonna have to make a, a stoichiometric table anyway. Um, so we've got, uh, I'll try to, well, should I try to squeeze it in here? Sure, let's see. I'll use a different color just in case things get tight. Um, okay, species. This is batch, so these aren't molar fluorates. These are just initial moles. And we'll say mole at time t. All right. We have our different species, A, B, C, D, and our inert. And then we'll have a line for our total. And we have Na naught, zero, zero, and D naught, and I naught. And uh, something valuable for us to consider here is um, the total number of moles that we started with. So we have this N total. Uh, at time equals zero, which is just the sum of these, Na naught, Nd naught, and Ni naught. Okay, now um, hopefully you feel pretty good about stoichiometric tables after that generalized example that I showed you um, in an earlier video. So we know that we have our whatever number of moles of A we started with times one minus the conversion of A. And for B and C, because of the stoichiometry, we have um, uh, just the product of the number of moles of A that we started with and the conversion of A. For ND, we have ND naught plus two times um, the number of moles of A that we started with times conversion of A. And then we still just have NI naught here. So something uh, interesting to note is that your total number of moles in the um, batch reactor is equal to the number of moles you started with plus 
3 times Na0 times conversion of A. So if you're just thinking about this conceptually, what you've got here, uh, in particular, this relationship of, um, you know, the total number of moles is how much you started with plus three times uh, the, the number of moles of A times the conversion. This is really what's telling you how the volume is changing as a function of the conversion. Um, you know from the ideal gas law that this is the relationship that is going to be directly proportional to the total volume. Okay. So how do you actually use this to solve anything? If we look just above, and this is part of the reason why I wanted this to be on the same page, what can we do with this information? Um, if we look at our original expression, we don't really have, uh, well, I mean, I guess what I should note first is we have a concentration of A that we have under step three here in terms of mole fraction. And so presumably we're gonna put that in in place of uh, C sub A. Um, so what we, what we then would have on the right hand side in terms of unknowns would be the mole fraction of A. On the left hand side we have conversion. Well, what we've done with the stoichiometric table um, is, is we've made what could be the right hand side in terms of conversion. But instead of being able to directly substitute for a concentration, uh, we're, we're coming in through this mole fraction term. So what is the mole fraction of A? Can we get that from this table? And the answer is yes. The mole fraction of A at any given time is just the moles of, of A at time t divided by the total number of moles. So that's the real value here. 